What is up everybody, Shwayze here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my 20,000 mile update on my 2021 Ford Bronco. Hey everyone, before we dive into today's video, I wanna tell you about Octane Coffee Company. It is the car-themed coffee company with a variety of different roasts paired with iconic names. You've got Big Block, Race Gas, The Goat, it's perfect for early morning cars and coffee or cruises down the canyon. It is the coffee for all car enthusiasts. Pick up your bag at octanecoffeecompany.com, link is down below, and get 10% off your first order using promo code OCTANE10. Now back to the video. All right, so in full disclosure, I've driven a little bit over 20,000 miles. I'm sitting around 21 and a half or so, but I wanted to make this video because I think it'd be useful for people who are considering a Ford Bronco as their next vehicle. Now, I did make my two-year update just a few months ago back in July, but in today's video, there are some things that I forgot to mention in that video and also a couple new things that have come up. So that's what we're gonna be covering in today's video. Now, for those of you that don't follow the channel, I picked up this 2021 Ford Bronco, big bend trim level back in July of 2021. Uh, this vehicle was the second week of production of any Ford Bronco, and so it was a very, very early run. And this was actually the first Ford Bronco to be sold at my dealership, which is uh, Ken Garf West Valley Ford. I've made some videos there as well. Now, I've only done a couple small things to it, the main one being the wheel and tire setup and the suspension. So my Big Ben trim level didn't come with a Sasquatch package. Now, there are a couple reasons why I didn't choose that package, and I've discussed that in other videos. The main reason is I wanted to be one of the earlier ones to get one of these vehicles. And the Sasquatch package was kind of a bottleneck, and if I opted for that, I probably would have had to wait another six months to a year to get my Ford Bronco. So I decided to just pick the standard wheel and tire package. They're about 32, 33 inch wheels and just run with it. Well, after picking it up, I decided, you know what? I really want the Sasquatch package. So rather than wait for a new one to come in, I found an individual who's actually selling their Sasquatch package uh, because they upgraded to 37s. And I ended up acquiring the wheel and tire setup and the suspension directly off of a Bronco Sasquatch. I think his was a Badlands. And just so you're aware, these are direct bolt-off, bolt-on type of application from a non-Sasquatch to a Sasquatch package. You don't need to really jerry-rig anything or make any modifications. It's a pretty simple installation. I actually had my uh, fellow mechanic do this install, and I made a video about that project. So if you guys are interested in that process, you could check it out. But uh, that added a little bit of extra inches of lift to this vehicle and added these more aggressive 35-inch beadlock capable wheels and tires uh, and they're really capable great in the snow i've had a great experience overall and then i did add a little sidestep over here now i do want to apologize for how dirty my vehicle is uh it snowed here just a couple days ago it's actually going to snow again today and so i didn't want to necessarily wash it when it was just going to get dirty again but because of that this vehicle does look really bad on camera so apologies for that i tend to keep this a little bit cleaner than what it is today now there are a couple things i want to point out since my two-year update video just a few months ago one of those things is the value or the prices of Ford Broncos in the market. Those have started to come down. Now, don't get me wrong, it's unlikely that you're gonna be able to buy one under MSRP, but you're not necessarily gonna see the 10, 20, $30,000 markups that you'd find somewhere about a year ago on the new and used car market. These are generally going for about the same price as MSRP. In fact, Carvana actually tracked the value of my vehicle over time, and according to that website, the value of my vehicle is about $31,000 given my trim and spec and my mileage. Now, I think that's generally on the lower side. From what I'm seeing in my local market, looking at the Classifieds website, I could probably ask somewhere in the high 30s, low 40s for my vehicle, which is just right around the MSRP that I paid for it. I paid around $42,500 plus tax. And that's about what I could probably get, at least without the tax portion, if I chose to sell this car today, which is a far cry from what it was a year ago where I could have made probably $10,000 extra if I had chosen to sell this car, but I didn't want to because I really enjoyed it. That being said, if we wait maybe another year or so, prices for these things are gonna start coming down even further and it's unlikely that I'm gonna be able to get 42 grand on this car in a year from now. It's probably gonna be closer to like 35,000 and it's only gonna go down from there. Part of that reason has to do with the fact that production has ramped up for the Bronco. You're no longer gonna to have to wait one to two years to pick up a Bronco even if you do get the Sasquatch package. You're probably looking about a six month wait and if you choose the standard Big Bend without the Sasquatch package, 
it's probably somewhere around three or four months, which is pretty standard for ordering any new vehicle, even before the pandemic. Now, the next thing I wanna point out is an issue that occurred just about a month and a half ago. And again, it has to do with my frameless windows. This is something that kind of keeps recurring. It's really not a big issue, but it gets a little bit annoying over time. So what happened is, uh, as you can see, when I open up this door, the window actually slides down just a little bit so that it can clear that opening over here. So if I open it, it slides down. If I close it, it slides back up. That's pretty normal. That's how frameless windows work. Well, what happened with just a few months ago, and I have really no clue how this happened. There was no apparent reason. It wasn't cold. It wasn't uh, jamming or anything like that. It just happened to stop rolling down. So I would open this door and I noticed that when I closed it, it was almost like it was not closing appropriately. And that's because this window was actually hitting up against this rubber seal at the top. And so it wasn't actually closing the door as well as it should and kind of leaving this window a little bit more open, leaving a little bit of a gap over here in the back. Uh, what I ended up doing to be able to close my door and not break the window was actually rolling down the window just a smidge over here on the center armrest. And that way I could actually close the door and not worry about breaking it by accidentally slamming this door shut. What that meant though was that this window was always down just about a quarter of an inch the entire time I was driving it. Now I can't say I noticed it being much louder on the inside because, well, it's a soft top roof. It's really as loud as it gets already, but it was a little bit annoying to have to have my window open just a tad bit. I will also point out that the automatic window up function stopped working. So I would push it and it would automatically lower, but unlike these other windows, where if I pull up, it will automatically close the window. I couldn't actually automatically close it. I had to hold this switch to be able to close this window. Now you may be wondering, how did I fix this? Well, I honestly have no idea. It just started working again. Just like it stopped working one day, it all of a sudden started working after I shut the vehicle on and off a couple times or waited a couple days. It just started working normally as it should. Uh, I even tried playing around with a switch where I lowered it and held the down button a couple seconds and then lifted it and then lowered it again which is something I did on other windows in previous times where this issue has happened, and that didn't seem to fix it. So really just leaving it alone, letting it rest, you know, like a young teenage child. You just gotta give it some space, and then maybe over time it will automatically fix itself, which is what happened on my Ford Bronco. Now, like I mentioned, this isn't the first time that I've had small little issues or grievances with these frameless windows. Overall, I still really like them because I can fold the window down, take the door off, and have uh, kind of a smaller door and also what appears to be a bigger entry into the vehicle, but it is not perfect. And there are sometimes issues with these windows not sliding down or even shaking when I open the door. It just doesn't sound as solid as sometimes when I drive a Jeep where it does have a framed window and it feels a little bit sturdier. In either case, I'd still take frameless windows over framed, but you just gotta get used to that and you gotta know that if you're looking at buying a Ford Bronco. Now for the next thing I wanna discuss is a small issue I've been having probably about 10,000 miles into owning this vehicle. And that has to do with a little bit of a creak inside of the seat. So it's gonna be hard for me to replicate, but when I move in the seat, especially when I'm accelerating or braking, there's kind of a creak coming from what appears to be the hinge between the seat cushion and the seat back. Not entirely sure where it is coming from. And I brought this up to my Ford dealership last time I took it in for service, and they ended up adding a little bit of grease to the railing that the seat actually sits on. But that didn't seem to fix the problem. So the next time I went back to them, I told them about the problem again, and what they're doing now is actually ordering me a new seat cushion. Now, the upholstery is staying the same. They're actually gonna take that upholstery off and put it on top of the new seat cushion, but they think that is the issue with my seat. Now, a couple things to point out. First off, it's not a big issue. It's not something that's dangerous. It's not uh, something that I'm really worried about or gonna cause issues over time. It's more of just a minor annoyance, a little creak that I continuously hear inside of the vehicle that kind of gets on my nerves, especially considering this is relatively a new car. The next thing to mention about it is I'm taking this vehicle in to get this service completed in about a week and a half. So the next update video I make, I will let you know if that solves the issue that I'm having or if it's maybe something else entirely. Also, I'm curious if any of you Ford Bronco owners out there have 
experienced something similar. I gotta say, I don't weigh that much. I'm kind of average, average height. So I don't really get why I would have damaged anything. I don't do any crazy off-roading in this vehicle either to say I damaged something when I took it off-roading. It's mostly been a daily driver to and from work with some light off-road trails here and there. So I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit odd that this seat cushion does have that type of issue, but I am curious to hear everybody else's thoughts down in the comments below. Now, another thing that I recently happened to pay for my Ford Bronco since my last update video was a set of new tires specifically for the rear. Now I didn't replace all four because my front were actually within the parameters of Ford's guidance to not have to replace it without impacting the four-wheel drive system. So really what happened was my own stupidity. Now back when I had my mechanic replace the wheels and tires and upgrade the suspension, he warned me that I should probably get an alignment done on this vehicle because I'm changing up the angles of what's going on underneath the vehicle. Well, even though I listened to him, I didn't actually end up to go and do it. So because of that, I was noticing that over time, my front tires were getting a little bit more wear on the outside than they were on the inside. And they were wearing quite quickly to the point where I had to get new tires. Now, before I replaced them, I moved the front tires over to the back. I did a tire rotation. And because of that, the rear tires just really weren't looking good. And I had to replace those with a new set. Cost me about 550 bucks between labor and installation. Now, the tires that used to be on the back that were then rotated to the front are the ones over here. And they didn't really have an alignment issue because there's just not as much suspension parts going on in the back. And so when you change the height with that new suspension, it didn't really need an alignment. But this is just a heads up to those of you that do upgrade your suspension or even your wheels and tires. You may want to get an alignment at the same time. That will save you a couple hundred bucks when you have to replace the tires when you probably didn't need to if you did an alignment on time. Now, ever since purchasing this vehicle, there have been a few recalls with the latest one that I took the vehicle in for had to do with the seat belt latch and I'll be completely honest I don't know exactly what they did I think they just added this little section over here on the seat belt that will keep the actual latch on the seat belt in place so it doesn't slide all the way down to the bottom that way makes it a little bit easier to access so I can raise it up here and that way whenever I get in the vehicle it's always going to be up top rather than I have to search for it uh, and I think the recall letter said something about how owners were having a hard time finding the seat belt latch and so because of that they weren't buckling up to me it kind of seems like a personal problem not necessarily Ford's problem but nonetheless I took it in they got that fixed and now I can actually reach the seatbelt latch, which was a problem I didn't really think I had. But there were some other safety recalls I've had over time that I've taken this vehicle in for. They've done some software updates. They also checked the boots on my front axles. So periodically I would get a letter in the mail and next time I take this vehicle in for service, they typically perform those. The only downside to that is it takes a little bit longer to do those recalls and sometimes they're waiting on parts. So it's not one of those things where I can typically drop the vehicle off for an oil change, wait an hour and then grab it and drive off. I kind of have to leave it there the whole day. Now, luckily my dealership does offer transportation services, makes it a little bit easier, but just keep that in mind that it's not gonna be a quick replacement or a quick fix. You kinda have to leave it there for maybe upwards of 24 hours. Now, the next thing I wanna discuss is the interior and give you an update or a resolution to an issue I faced just a few months ago when I made my two-year update video. And that had to do with the wireless Android Auto. So I was talking about in that video how sometimes it would freeze up and I wouldn't be able to click any buttons. I wouldn't even be able to access the Ford Sync software because it was completely frozen. I mean, I couldn't do anything without turning this vehicle off and then turning off all the accessories and then turning them back on. Well, thankful to a handful of viewers and subscribers out there, you guys gave me some really good advice that I wanted to share with everybody else out there because not everybody might know this cool trick to be able to fix the issues with your Android Android Auto or your Apple CarPlay or honestly any software issue you have with your sync system. Well, some of you recommended holding down this power button simultaneously while holding down this next seek track button. So if you hold these two buttons down at the same time and hold them there for a good five to 10 seconds, not only will it start shifting through different tuning stations on your FM radio, but it will reboot this system and it reboots pretty quickly. But once it does that, it fixes a lot of the issues that you're having. So I've had to do this probably once or twice a week, unfortunately, but it has worked every single time. And then it 
simply starts back up and I can load my Android Auto. So I just wanted to point that out for all of you that may be experiencing similar issues because the handful of you that told me about this feature really helped me out a lot because sometimes I run into issues when I'm driving for a long period of time and I can't just simply turn the vehicle off and on. I kind of have to wait till I get to my destination. So thank you out there and hopefully you guys find it useful. Now the next feature is something I've never really talked about but I actually use quite often and that is the Ford Pass app. Uh, so as you can see here, I've actually named my vehicle Goliath, which is uh, actually a suggestion of one of my subscribers. So thank you to him for suggesting that. But using this Ford Pass app, you can actually turn this vehicle on, similar to lots of other manufacturers that have apps. But uh, I actually use this feature quite a bit, and it typically always works. Now, as you can see, it's still loading, but it's like about 10 seconds or so to turn on. Sometimes in the mornings it takes about 30 seconds, but I've never had it not turn on. Uh, I can also lock and unlock the vehicle. I can see where it's located, what the gas tank is at, what the odometer is at. I can even schedule service over here as well. And overall, I've actually been really impressed with it. So it's definitely a nice perk to have when you own a Ford Bronco. And the other advantage to it is I don't actually pay monthly or anything for that. It's a free service that's included with every purchase of a Ford Bronco. That's nice because some of the other manufacturers factors out there. For example, my wife's Range Rover does charge, I believe, annually for her to be able to use the app to turn on and off the vehicle and to track its location. But Ford just gives you that for free. Well, there you have it, folks. That finishes off my 20,000 mile update on my 2021 Ford Bronco with the Big Ben trim level. If you guys are curious about more in-depth information, I recommend you check out my two-year update from just a few months ago because I talk about some other things that I don't discuss in today's video. But today, I just wanted to give you some of the highlights and some things that I've been impressed with and things that could be a little bit better. Overall, I have been very impressed with the reliability and build quality of this vehicle. Yes, there are some things that aren't perfect, but keep in mind, this is week two production of a brand new vehicle that they didn't produce for pretty much 20 years. And so the fact that there's so few problems on this actually impresses me quite a bit. This vehicle has never left me stranded. I've never been worried about getting into the vehicle and it not working. I've never been worried about taking this vehicle on a long road trip because who knows if it's gonna get me to my destination. That's never been a fear of mine. It's been very reliable and I've simply just taken it in for regular service and little issues that really don't prevent me from driving this car but may make it a little bit better for me to drive because I don't get to hear some of those squeaks as often. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe the channel for all of the weekly car videos. Also check me out on all the social media at Schwazy underscore. Until next time, everybody, I hope you stay Schwazy, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.